Hello everyone, my name is Chris Rodden and I'm your instructor for this Intro to Health and Kinesiology course. But before I got started with the course and what it all entails, I figured I'd make a video of why it's important that we get more people like you to join the health and fitness industry. I don't think it's any secret that America isn't in the best of shape, but this isn't from a lack of trying. There are many organizations and health professionals across America that have desperately trying to increase the physical activity of both children and adults and make sure that we have healthier, longer lasting lives. One such organization is the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, whose Healthy People Initiative is used to identify the areas of improvement across the health of U.S. citizens. And by setting goals and spreading information and education, we hope to improve upon the health of our citizens decade after decade. We have seen improvements as the years have gone by. For example, the percentage of Americans that meet the minimal physical activity requirements has increased over the past 10 years, and even the amount of people reaching the upper ends of recommendation has increased as well. However, just because more adults have taken up physical activity or have started an exercise regimen doesn't mean that there aren't concerning data points. For example, one of the major goals of Healthy People 2020 were to lower the obesity rates of both children and adults, both of which have only increased over the past 10 years. Over the past 10 years, we have definitely not gotten healthier. Four out of every 10 Americans is obese, and one third of the US population has hypertension or high blood pressure, putting them at an increased risk for a heart attack or a stroke. In addition to that, 20% of those individuals don't even know that they have high blood pressure. Also, 10% of Americans have diabetes, type 2 diabetes, with 100 million U.S. citizens that are either pre-diabetic or have the full-blown disease. So what is going on? How come every 10 years we are setting these goals in order to become healthier and year after year we're just seeing the increased rate of morbidity and mortality in this nation due to poor lifestyle choices? Again, it's not through lack of effort. There are thousands of health professionals out there that are trying to encourage healthy behaviors and to get people to improve. But it just so happens that there are a lot of factors that prevent people from getting healthier. Let's just start with first that there is a lot of information about health, fitness, weight loss, all sorts of topics out there, right? And it's hard to cipher through and know which information is good and reliable and what information is just falsehoods or myths or rumors that have been spread around since the 50s, right? And the hard part is, is that people actually research health and exercise science or kinesiology Scientists have a hard time sometimes translating that statistics and data and information to actual practical real world advice. We live in a world where most people get their information from the headlines and don't even take the time to actually read the article. And so I find it very hard to believe that people overnight are just going to start to listen to scientists for health and fitness advice. They'd rather get it from their you know, comfortable sources, the Instagram models, the YouTubers. But there's a problem with this because these people, although they may be in great shape, are just models. They don't understand the science maybe or the complexities behind certain health and fitness topics. For example, if you were trying to get an elderly woman off her high blood pressure medication, what intensity of exercise, what modalities of exercise are best? If you were going to try to correct a muscle imbalance or improve on someone's agility, you need to have a lot more background information than just cut the calories and work out more. Although sometimes, you know, healthy behavior can be boiled down to these simple things, exercise science kinesiology is a lot more complex. And as professionals, we need to find a way to take this true information, the actual concrete science, and translate it for the general population. We also have to recognize as health and fitness professionals that being healthy is actually kind of difficult. If it were easy, we'd be a nation of skinny people walking around in bathing suits all the time. But that's not the case. A lot of people struggle with losing weight and becoming physically active. And so we have to recognize that it's not only the physiological things that we need to look at as far as exercise and diet, 
but we also need to pay attention to those psychological factors, behavior, motivation, socioeconomic status. All of these things play a role in the success rate that someone's going to have in losing weight or becoming healthy or starting a fitness regimen. For example, if you think about a single mother of two, she's not going to have the time that a 20 year old in college is going to have to dedicate themselves to physical activity. If you are from a lower economic background, you may not have the resources to healthier foods or higher quality fitness facilities. And all these things we need to keep in mind when we're looking at our clients and we're looking at the population that we're working with in order to best determine what is the proper plan of action to promote these healthy behaviors and still be able to get our clients, our patients to the places where they need to be health-wise. So here's where you come in, because now more than ever, we need enthusiastic fitness professionals to, to try to figure out new ways of engaging and having higher and better success rates with our population. We are getting older, we are getting heavier, and we're getting unhealthier. And so we need people who understand exercise science, who understand the way the body works, who understand motivation, behavior, all these different factors, and who are able to translate this information to a population. We have many individuals that still do not eat healthy, still do not get the proper amount of aerobic exercise, still don't get the pro proper amount of resistance or strengthening exercises. And what we need to do in order to ensure that this nation as a whole becomes healthier is start implementing strategies that work. And so if you can take the time over these next four years, these next 10 years, to better yourself as a health professional and to understand how every li little minute thing plays into the role of health and fitness, we could be a healthier nation because of it. Thank you all for watching this video and I wish you all luck on your journey to becoming a successful health and fitness professional.